There is a special place that embodies the African-American spirit of tenacity and surviving in spite of the odds. To grow something and to become something and to really be free. And they believed in the land. They believed in the power of the land. Land was money, land was wealth, and they believed in that. It's the idea of knowing that I'm connected to the forefathers who endured slavery and to know their personal stories, which, you know, makes it very, very, uh, the connection very strong. It maybe have an appreciation for who I really am and what I'm connected to and what it reflects in terms of American history. I'm Angela Bates, um, uh, Nicodemus descendant. Um, I am the resident historian, so to speak. I am the executive director of the Nicodemus Historical Society, and I'm the one that worked to get Nicodemus designated as a national park. How about that? <laughs> Nicodemus, while I never heard the specific story, I knew about the, um, the Great Migration, I heard about Exodusters, but no one, no one was telling me about uh, Exodusters who were actually still in existence. No one was telling me that there were descendants that I could talk to and touch and say, you have pictures? You, you, you still live there? There's a place to actually go to hear more about the stuff that I read? Nicodemus is, is a historical place. In the minds of freed slaves that were living in Kentucky after slavery had ended, the Civil War, and they found that they weren't getting any, any, anywhere. The reconstruction had happened, taken place, and, and died down, and they weren't still ownership of their own things, their own land or anything else, and the word got out that there was land in the West to be had. You could get your plot. When you think about the migration of the African American, um, it, it happened, you know, during Reconstruction or at the end of Reconstruction. We had the masses of them, especially here in the state of Kansas, they had over 40,000 African Americans that migrated into the state in a two-year time period, 1879 to 1880. So we represent that. This Nicodemus becomes the icon, the oldest and, uh, and only remaining all-black town west of the Mississippi. Nicodemus, because of economy and the Dust Bowl and just being a farm community, like any small pioneer town at this time, you need the railroad to survive so you can bring supplies in, people, all that good stuff. Yes, and so they're excited because they have the money and they think the tracks are going to come through. Does not happen that way. They were waiting on the train to come to Nicodemus. Them certain people, when they heard that the train wasn't coming to Nicodemus, they left town, took the buildings with them. The jobs and kind of petered out. People came out of Nicodemus and went to Denver, then from Denver to California. And we kept in touch because even though we did that, we always come back home. For us uh, that are descendants, I would say it's, we call it homecoming, but officially and, and initially in 1878 when they had their first one, all, probably all the way up into the 50s, it was called an emancipation celebration. It's, it's a sea of beautiful family members who care about their story, who care about others caring about their story. It's what makes, makes me love my job so much. You know, people interact with you as if you're family. So I think the common response is that they feel like they're a part of this, this fabric. The, the thing about Nicodemus is it, uh, while, while the story of homesteading it, it speaks to a larger narrative of, um, of struggle in this country, not just survive, but to thrive. We have at least six descendants of Nicodemus that have played in the NFL. And so the two that did grow up here in Nicodemus is Earl Schweitzer, and he was an amazing athlete, and he was the first black to integrate the Green Bay Packers in 1954. And so that's very special. So um, his nephew, Marvin, also played in the NFL, and um, he played for the Buffalo Bills. The other connections that we have, we, we claim 
the comment that played over at Kansas KU, Gail Sayers. <laughs> and so we claim him because his family is from Nicodemus and so they would come out for summers and visit. So Gail and his brother also played for the NFL. Gail played for the Chicago Bears. And then we also have two other sets of brothers that played in the NFL and they are um, Gerald Wilhite and his uh, brother Kevin Wilhite. And Gerald played for the Denver Broncos Broncos and he made it and played in the Super Bowl as well. His grandmother lived here in Nicodemus and they would come down for summers and they still come out to visit us during our homecoming celebration which, which is awesome. And to see the beauty uh, coming to a Nicodemus homecoming of family members coming together to celebrate the sacrifices made back in 1877, it's a beautiful thing to see what overcoming struggle looks like. I mean, yes, there was a migration of the African-Americans out of the South in the 1930s and what have you going to the North. Um, but that's really not the first major migration of the African-American out of the South. It was to the West. Uh, without individuals having the, the determination and the courage to homestead, post-Reconstruction, there weren't a lot of options for African-Americans in the South. Whatever they had here was better than what was back there. We know where our roots are. We come back, we know who our relatives, we can tell, you know, some people don't know who their grandparents are. We know not only our grandparents, we know our great grandparents. We know our lineage. And because of that, that keeps us strong. So to be in this uniform and, and protecting a, a story that, that is actually the reason that I'm in the uniform, right there there's something to be said about the gratitude that i can i can share with um, those who came before me by simply wearing the uniform and telling their story and uh and so yeah every every day i put on this uniform i i know that there was there was bloodshed in order for me to share their story and i think nicodemus is that icon that represents that chapter in our american history and, and what's, what's challenging is, is that we have a homesteading story here in America um, that, that uh, isn't, isn't thoroughly inclusive. And so Nicodemus gives a, a checks and balances to the history that we tell and read because it, it offers a much more grander perspective of what homesteading looked like, uh, which wasn't very singular, but more so multiplicitous. History is a, is a special thing because it, it, uh, it teaches us about our morality uh, it, it teaches us about um, how much we've, we've matured and in some cases uh, how we've been immature. I haven't spent one day in slavery. All I did was preserve their history and their stories. When we were slaves, we did not have that. Our, the children were stripped away from the mothers, the fathers were sold on another farm. But when we got to be free, it was so important to keep in touch with our family, to know who our family is, to know what the land is. So we can tell you, most of us can tell you how we are all related. My great grandfather is Charles, this young man right here. And what happens is Charles marries Elizabeth and we have her out to the side because Elizabeth, who is my great grandmother, she's the first postmistress here in Nicodemus. So we, I come from a line of women who took care of business. <laughs> so it's, and, and so to me, it's, a, it's about the preservation of the stories, the preservation of the history. At least we forget, as they say. Let's not forget where we came from. And because I know who my great, great, great grandfather is, and I know his personal stories, and I know the stories of others and how they came to, to, to Nicodemus from, from Kentucky, it's, it, it's about preserving that history. It's about telling their stories. It's about they are not here to speak. But those are the ones that we're standing on. Those, their lives, their blood, their sweat, their tears, they're living through uh, a horrific time in American history and not be able to have their stories told and remembered. Yeah. I, that's why I did it. That's why I have the passion that I do. 
we, we got an order to go. And what it is is just the love of Nicodemus. I have to come back home. And so fortunately enough, I was able to get a position as a community interpreter. And so um, I don't work with the for the park service, we work together. And, and basically, um, just when the visitors come in, we're telling our story, we're, we're giving them information, we're encouraging them to spread the news about Nicodemus. If we can simply help people um, come to Nicodemus and leave a little bit more appreciative about what it took for us to call ourselves Americans, for us to salute the flag, um, the 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 good, challenging, and indifferent stories that make us Americans, I, I think we'd, we'd grow a, a little bit greater appreciation for difference. And I just love to see people's faces light up when we tell them that we're descendants. And they're like, oh wow, you guys are descendants? Yes, we come from the original settlers that came out here and we're still here and we're still going.